What's not to watch? They're the best at what they do, and I'm the best at what I do, and together it's like, it's on. Is it the best? Best there ever was. Best there is now, best there ever will be. And then when I walked down the street, people would have looked and they would have said, there goes Roy Hobbs. The best there ever was in this game. In case some of you wonder who the best is, they're up here on this plaque on the wall. You sure you're ready for this? I'll do my best. Your best? Losers always whine about their best. Winners go home and the prom queen. the best soccer show north american soccer network nasn.tv jason davis jared dubois we're live on a thursday mixed it up a little bit on you it seemed necessary there are playoffs happening now they are happening now the playoffs are now (laughs) we're trying to respect the schedule a bit yes we we are we didn't exactly do that in the last week of the mls regular season but it was a little different situation this time these games are are Muy importante. So we have to get out of the way. We did that. We uh, we we uh, moved to a Thursday night. We are brought. We are broadcasting. We are recording live before Colorado can, Columbus. Can I apologize? Off. Can I apologize right off the top? For what? For wearing uh, what looks like Mister Rogers sweater <laughs> on the show today. Yeah. What is that? It's, it's almost. I, it's, I, I came in hot from work. It's don't a sweat little. The no, no, no. Son. It's fine. I'm it's looking a, good right now. It's a little Freddy Kruegerish, actually. Maybe, well, I don't know the colors aren't right. I'm but. worried about losing street cred right now, so I appreciate you at least associating <laughs> me with like a mass murderer. That gives is me that some really, street cred. Is that really street cred? You want to be associated with a, uh, never mind. I'm not going down the Freddy Krueger. I think Freddy Krueger has more street cred than Mr. Rogers. I'm Probably not sure, does. but I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty certain. Probably does. On this episode of the Best Soccer Show, we're obviously going to talk MLS playoffs. It's going to be the bulk of the show. We've got a game to talk about that happened last night. New York beats uh, FC Dallas in Frisco in front of dozens of people. Uh, we've got a game tonight, which we're not going to touch on a lot because by the time a lot of people listen to this game or to this show, that game will be over and we have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, we're going to talk to Brian Strauss in the second segment. He is a, uh, a last minute replacement and an excellent one for us. We'll talk to him. Big picture MLS playoffs, uh, about New York, about LA and New York facing off. Now the rest of the games, RSL Seattle, uh, the question of whether or not that's one of the best semi, uh, conference semis in history. Uh, I'm tar- starting to lean that way. I'm re- getting really geeked up for that series, uh, Jared. That's going to yeah. be going to be a great one. And we'll talk to him about some big picture stuff. The, the playoff structure is taking a beating online right now, Jared, and uh, because partly because of what's happening with your boys with LA, they have to go fly across country now for one of those legs. I, which one is the? It's- it's poor planning all around. I mean, first of all, it, you people say you're rewarding the top seeds by giving a buy. That's real nice, but th- nice. that means that Philadelphia Union and Houston Dynamo and Sporting Kansas City are also getting the same benefit that Supporter Shield winning team uh, right. gets as well. Right. And then in addition to that, I would see I would say it's a advantage if the Supporter Shield winner got to pick uh, if they want to play home or, or away first. Okay. But the league tells the team that your advantage is you play second. Well, in LA's case, that means a midweek game in LA and right. the, the Home Depot, Cent- Home Depot right. Center's contract with the Cal State Dominguez Hills campus that it's on is that they during the school season, a midweek game, they can limit to only 15,000 tickets sold. Right. I, mean, I think that uh, that's something a lot of people have either missed or if they've seen it, they're like, what the hell? This has always been the case with LA and midweek games. So what what advantage does LA have none. now for winning Supporters Shield? None. I don't get it. None. Absolutely none. You're right. I mean, it, it, and you know, the only the only advantage that they're playing the last playoff qualifying playoff team, the, the last seeded team, is is New York. Uh, you could make an argument that yeah, they're not how's as that bad as that been for last place teams the last couple of years. A I good mean, point. What, two MLS Cup good winners point. in the last three years hasn't kept uh, hasn't kept RSL and Colorado from winning titles. Uh, so you have to wonder is 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 New York going to be the next team to do it? And even if they don't go all the way. They have a really good shot of knocking off L.A. I mean, L.A. is the best team. I think everybody agrees with that. And we we got to talk about our bracket contest. We've got people filling out brackets all over the place. Wow. And, and, and tremendous, I uh, think, uh, tremendous follow through on that. Uh, the uh, the the contest, cl- the entries close. Wow. Over 300, I'm told, for those brackets. That's outstanding. 
Uh, but that's yeah. going to close. I don't know. We closed it already. You're going to close it at kickoff of, of Colorado and Columbus more than likely. We closed it last night. Did we close it, it last, night? last night? Oh, that's right. The first game was, was last, game night. last night. I'm sorry. It's I came in just as hot <laughs> as you did in a different way. So, yeah, last night. There's sorry. a lot of people closed. out there hanging themselves right closed. now. So the brackets are already busted. Yes, that's true. Well, I don't know how many people. That's something we got to talk about. We got to talk about what happened last night. How many people had uh, FC Dallas beating New York and are disappointed? You did? I had New York. I I tweeted last week, I think New York's going to the MLS Cup final. I'm, I said on my Galaxy oh, okay. show See, yesterday, stop, that stop. I think New York's going to beat LA. This is why you got to pay attention to me. I just said, who had Dallas beating New York and is now disappointed, and you raised your hand. Oh, I, sorry, I just didn't, <laughs> I, you know no, I don't listen. I think, I always, I think, it's all about me. I think a lot of people had New York winning that, so I'm guessing that that a, uh, a majority of the brackets entered in our contest. And and the, the prize, by the way, is a, another copy of FIFA 12. We've got that to... Uh, that coming down the pike, thanks to the people at EA Sports. Uh, so it, it, I think a lot of people probably did have New York uh, winning that that match. I mean, FC Dallas hasn't played well. They don't have much of a home field advantage. Uh, New I York. I think they were five losses in their last six games or something like that going in. They were sputtering into the playoffs, whereas New York was doing very well towards the end of the season. And well, I think one of the things we should talk about is that last place team what the playoffs provides to them is okay you've scraped through an entire 34 game season i know we haven't done well but here's our chance for redemption that's why i think why that last place team comes in so hot every year is because they can t throw away everything that was bad about their season and say everything starts over here and i think mls has a track record of those teams getting hot in the playoffs whereas yeah. a team like la and seattle who have been playing these international competitions are weary they're they're up against the ropes right now i think teams like new york can definitely throw a big haymaker on in the playoffs they certainly can and i i, I watched you know i'm sure you watched the game as well i think new york played it in a classic on the road uh you, you know knockout situation they didn't new york didn't push it all they they took a lot of pressure from fc dallas fc dallas just didn't put away their chances and they had some and it it's really i mean it's not like new york dominated the game and you come out of it thinking well they're really primed for a run it's more like New York just did more. Did more. I mean, they just they they did more with their team. And who knew? Who thought Medi Bellucci would come in and be the guy to set up the goal that eventually wins the game for New York? And Joel and Pear scoring is not a surprise. But Medi Bellucci being the one to come off the bench, Hans Baca actually pulling the trigger on a substitution, and it works. Jared. A substitution coming through for Baca. That's amazing. Hey, <laughs> amazing. we should say no for everyone out there listening right now. Get in on the chat. We want calls from you. We want to hear from you. Uh, you can call us at two zero one four three zero best. B E S T, or you can get us on Skype at Best Soccer Show. Call in, take part in the conversation. Is your bracket busted? Did you have New York going through? Who do you got in tonight's match? Who do you have in the Real Salt Lake Seattle match? I mean, that's a big one it's coming a big up one. right there. And we'll Certainly. talk about all that stuff with Brian Strauss in a few minutes. Certainly. We got uh, uh, RSL and, and Seattle are the marquee matchup, I think, beyond LA and, and, and uh, New York. And that's. Is any is anyone excited for Colorado's, I mean, Colorado and Columbus? No, I don't It's just so. like the, the wah, wah, wah <laughs> game of the playoffs, isn't it? A little bit. But the, both those teams are kind of. I mean, there's 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 players. They're decent players, and both those teams kind of. But they, they're they're. But is anyone picking them to step, go past you know, the first round? Um, probably not. I mean, it, it, the the winner's going to go on to face Sporting Kansas City. So we've, we, you know, uh, and I and I think a lot of people have Sporting Kansas City as kind of a dark, even though they won the East. I mean, they they won. They they were first place in the East. I think a lot of people have Sporting Kansas City as a dark horse to win the whole thing. Or get to the finals. I might even have them in the final. So uh, I, I don't know that anybody sees them getting past Sporting Kansas City. And there's going to be a home field advantage for, for KC in that situation. Whereas in the past, that might not have been the case. And both of those teams, Columbus and Colorado, have trouble drawing. It's not going to be, uh, uh, you know, their home leg's not going to be entirely daunting for sporting, so I don't know. I, I think I think you're right. I think that's kind of. The I, I, I made this comment uh, on a contribution I made to the Shin Guardian today. That came out today when we kind of reviewing the season in general, and I said that the Sporting Kansas City may be the most athletic team I may have ever seen in MLS. They are pretty. Uh, yeah, pretty them and Portland Timbers way. have that same kind of thing going on, where they may be lacking a bit of technique and finesse at a time at times, but I don't think on any given day there's any team that can really match up with them. Like I said they're, they're almost like the Fab Five, you know, where there was just. <laughs> There was no right. other team like that you back in the 90s where – Go ahead. What? 
No, no, I was going to no, say. There's they, just no other team. They, they were just different in that athleticism. And right. they, they just, uh, there's something, there's so much swagger in the way that team plays. And I, don't get me wrong. I think they, they can break down as easily as they can succeed. But there's something to be said about the way they go out and the way they run and jump. It, it's just ridiculous how much athleticism that team has. It's one of the, they're one of those teams that it's like that, uh, you know, I'm not saying that Peter Vermes doesn't have a, a strategy in place and a game plan and they don't go out and, and, and intend to do certain things. I'm sure they do a lot, but they definitely seem like they can kind of just grab the game and just wing it and, and not street ball necessarily, but kind of in that vein, like we're just going to figure something out here and we'll make it happen. And Kai Kamara it comes with youth and they got a yeah. lot of youth. There. Kai Kamara will do this or Teal Bunbury do that or CJ Sapong will do this. And they got Zussi with the cannon and they, I mean, uh, the, the, there's just even Chance Myers give Chance credit Myers, to a, sure. a, a little white guy with a headband. I mean, the, the guy still has some, a little bit of flavor in him. And, and when that guy was took what first overall, I think a few <laughs> years ago, was that what it was, or was he first overall? Uh, I, I'd have to check Chance on that. Myers. I can't I remember. Know. He was up there though. He was like in the for top three picks one season. You and were, you, I, I, you were a hater. I did. Oh, yeah, I was a hater. I didn't see anything in the kid, but a yeah. few years later, he's looking good on that yeah. right back spot. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's the best right back. But I mean, I think Soli's season with New York has been a tremendous. But and right. it's unfortunate they're going to lose him in the matchup with LA. I think that could well, be not one of the biggest determining it's, factors. It's a stupid decision on his part to go in with that oh. tackle. I mean, that that you have nobody to blame but yourself. It's not like there's an injury. Sixty yards they, from goal. They have Dax McCarty who picked up an injury, uh, who will probably be back from what I hear. He's he's told people that he'll be back. He's just gonna ice and he'll be okay. But they you know, they, they Luke Rogers missed the game in Dallas. I don't know what his status is uh for the next round on what is that, Sunday? Or Saturday, Saturday, yeah, that, Saturday. That's asking a lot of this team. If, if Rodgers is back, that's a different team. That's asking right. a lot for consistent results without Rodgers. And, but losing solely, I, that is a huge – you imagine that – LA is most likely going to play Landon Donovan on the left. Uh, if that's the case, you're out uh, solely, you're out Albright. Who's going to cover that right back position for New York? It's going to be tough, and you got to think LA's going to be trying to take advantage of that more than any other place on the field. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. what I mean – uh, impressions from last night. Uh, I just want to finish this out here. We have um, you have uh, Breck Shea. Feel bad for Daniel Hernan Hernandez, dude. Feel, I feel bad, bad for. Daniel I know that that's a player that does not get much sympathy in MLS. I know no. he's a he is a bruiser. No. A lot not of a, people uh, not are well Daniel loved. Hernandez haters. Not well loved, the, Jared. The guy plays with passion. No, he's sure he admit, does. Though, he's one of those guys. Yes. If he's on your team, you love him. Yes. yes and yes. at the end, that last goal when Thierry Henry's breaking away from everyone and fumbling basically the goal into the net. Who's the one player that tracked back from midfield to try and track that person down and stop that play? Daniel Hernandez in the 94th minute. That's just amazing. Yeah, no, the, no the, guy, the guy has been great for Dallas. No quit at all. I, I do think that you have to sum up this season as a massive disappointment for FC Dallas because of every how everything went, how they started, how they, they contended for you know supporter shields and that type of thing through a lot of this season, how they went down to Mexico and won a game, how it looked like Shellis Hinman was doing – a magical job of keeping them together when Davi Ferreira went down this. I mean, I know you, you didn't have Davi Ferreira still when the playoffs came around, you didn't have him coming back. Like, like RSL's got Javi Morales coming back. So they were missing a major key and they weren't as good as they should have been or could have been, but injuries happen. I, th it's just, it just ultimately got to be crushing for them. Considering where the way, they were, we got, we got a fact checker in the chat chat room. We got the great Ray Curran in there, great writer. If you guys don't know him, go check him out. And he's telling us that Myers' number one overall pick in 2008 by Kansas City, and then not only that, but Carlos Mendez likely to play the right back position for New York. Okay, well there you go. I mean, uh, what kind of drop? I like Mendez. I like the Mendez and Ream center back combo much more than the Keel. Uh, and uh, well, Ream combination. So I don't know. Uh, I mean, you got to kind of pick your poison. I think, I've been in this a, game. I, I've been pretty impressed with with Keel. I think he does a decent job. I mean, he's not. He, you can't get past the hair, dude. <laughs> the hair is a problem for you. The hair is just that's it, that's, that's a deal killer. In general, I mean, you look at I uh, maybe it's a theme tonight on the show. Chance Myers, Stephen Keel, get it under control. <laughs> get it under control. You know, get some get some straightener, get some clippers, do what right. you got to do. I'm just I'm not a fan of the man band. You know, the the, the man headband. I, I I don't understand that. It's like a shoelace through the hair, super unmanly. And then uh, <laughs> Keel rocking those really curly locks. I mean, that hasn't been in since what what what's what's name Danny from, uh, from Caddyshack in in 1979 or 80 one whenever that came out sit down i, I just Danny. don't get it <laughs> i can't remember his last name 
Why am I blanking on that? It's a great movie, Caddyshack. Uh, yeah, the, just the, you're t- talking about big hair. It's just not in. You get me complete. You get me completely off track. I'm gonna try to think yeah. of that for the next like ten minutes now. What that guy's name was? It was Danny something. If though, I right? if I let mine grow out, it it goes. It just goes. It doesn't come you get down the natural at all. Perm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just it's like I have really thick hair. and It just goes. It's like a balloon. You get white fro. It's yes. Massive, massive you, you look like the Obama Chia Pet, you know, because the Obama Chia Pet comes out blonde for some reason. Why does uh, the Obama Chia Pet come out blonde? On the other side of this break, Brian Strauss from the Sporting News. Be right back. Back on the best soccer show, North American Soccer Network, NASN.TV. Jason Jarrett and on the line with us, uh, a man who really doesn't need an introduction, but we'll give him one anyway. Brian Strauss, Sporting News, talk some MLS playoff action. How are you, Brian? I am good, gentlemen. Thanks for having me, and I'm excited about spending an evening watching an MLS playoff game streaming on my laptop. Yeah, isn't that nice? I mean, I, I since you brought it up, I mean, you know, I don't. <laughs> there's not much MLS can do about what networks want what games. I know they have contracts. Obviously, their contract does not cover carrying every single playoff game because otherwise, this game would be on TV. But it's not. Um, you know, I guess it's just a reminder of how far this league still has to go. You know, I was just going to say, every time I get annoyed by something like that, I remember back to my own childhood when there was no pro soccer. And so if the worst thing about my life now is that I have to watch one playoff game on the laptop, I, I'll find the courage to get through it. Yeah, I kind of talk about, I think about that all the time, too. There was just a time where match updates were the best I could do in a forum. But speaking, so if if New York, excuse me, if Columbus and uh, Colorado is the unsexy matchup, you know, not even a TV station wants it. The RSL Seattle game has to be the Series. marquee matchup that's coming up pretty soon. How, is this a testament to uh, MLS is failing in the playoff structure to have this matchup so early, or does it speak to the drama that the playoff structure creates early and th- maybe throughout the whole playoff run? Wow. You, 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 the world, only the world's biggest optimist could find that silver lining there <laughs> hey, in this pile hey, of crap hey, that bro- is this playoff one. But Brian, but Brian, we get two RSL Seattle games. We get That's the only round this can happen, and we get two of them. That's that's got to be something, right? I suppose. Okay, fair point. I suppose on a standalone basis, uh, that is true. But I'm going to have a hard time enjoying them, knowing what BS it is that they're being forced to play each other. I mean, it's 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 so unfair uh, that it's it, it's going to just sort of sap my excitement about the series. Um, and and I love the little dig Christ made yesterday, where he said he felt sorry for Seattle that they had to play RSL in the first <laughs> round. I thought that was brilliant. Beautiful. He's amazing. Beautiful. No, Brian, you've talked a lot about the playoff structure, and you've had some ideas of your own. Talk to us a little bit about your uh, pet peeves with the playoff structure, your hates for the playoff structure, and what some of the solutions that you have, because you have some good ideas. Uh, thanks. It, it, it really, I, in all honesty, it started last November in Toronto, and um, there could not have been a more anticlimactic end to a pro sports season than, than that. Um, when Pablo Mastroeni lifted that trophy, you know, I, I think those of us in the press box felt like we're the only ones left in the stadium. Um, when you have such disinterest and such apathy about the moment that should be the crowning moment of your season, that's a sign that some, there's a real sickness. And so I just started to think about the fact that in the NHL and the NBA and the NFL, you know, no one ever questions the validity of the champion in those leagues. Um, it never happens. No one says the Bruins didn't deserve to win the Stanley Cup. The Mavericks didn't deserve to win the NBA title. Yet it's routine in MLS. And so I, I, I wrote the story when I was uh, at AOL uh, last, uh, last winter, and basically what I looked at was how long are the playoffs? How tough are these playoffs to win? And it turned out that in baseball it's a different animal because baseball the playoffs are about as random as they are in, in MLS because – the, the length of the playoffs as a percentage of the regular season is so small. Mm-hmm. But in the NBA, the NHL, and the NFL, the length of the playoffs is about 25% of the regular season. So there are a lot of games. It's a grind. It's tough to win. And as a result, the team that ends up on top is a deserving champion that nobody questions. So that's my big issue with, with the MLS playoffs. Because they're so short, and because soccer is already a low-scoring game, 
you get random outcomes. And the, since the format was adopted in 2003, the Supporter Shield winner has gone out in the first round twice as many times as they've made the final. And so that, to me, spells trouble. Sorry for the long answer. No, 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 no. I, th- I, I They're all valid points. I mean, I... MLS continues to tinker with this. If it was done right at any point, they wouldn't have continued to tinker with it. I know adding teams changes the dynamic. Um, you're talking about a, a playoff structure in other sports that is 25% the length of the regular season. That's uh, I, I, the, My math is failing me here. How many games is that? It, would that be for MLS? Uh, that would be about eight games, which, which, I, which I think is too long. Okay. Um, my... Uh... My idea that I that I presented last November, which which now Grant Wall has has picked up the torch and sniff, so now he gets all the credit. Oh uh, <laughs> uh, come on! I'm calling people out on the best stock. This show. is this is this. just this is just the the age old Sports Illustrated Sporting News rivalry. That's what that is. Uh, well, but people now like I see people on Twitter call it like the Wall Flash. Oh idea. no! Like, yeah, English first. Let's right? stamp it. Let's stamp it right now. That's all. Yeah, we'll we'll. It's not even alphabetical <laughs> order. Yeah, we'll put it out there for you. This I look and, and you you're right. You've been writing about this for for you know since last year for quite some time. Now go ahead and, and lay it. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Uh, no, no, no. And, and it's certainly not Grant. Grant. Grant gave me credit, and Grant's great. Right. Great. It's it's more just the the worshippers <laughs> of Grant. Um, <laughs> my my idea is is a, is two groups of four. Is a group stage. Um, and, and what that does, uh, and, and if you're going to have 10 teams in the playoffs, you could easily still do a, a one-game play-in uh, for the team to get to the group stage. So it, it works with 10 or 8. Um, so my idea is a group stage, two groups of four. We're used to seeing that in the World Cup. We're used to seeing that in the Champions League. Um, what that does is it makes the regular season matter because the top seed in the group will host three games, the second seed in the group will host two, the third seed will host one, and the fourth seed will travel. Um, and the other thing it does is it makes all the games matter to fans of all the teams. So as opposed to just really paying attention to one quarter of a bracket, you're now watching half of the playoffs right. because the results of the games not including your team affect your team. Um, and then you know, and then there are there are wrinkles here. My idea was that two teams advance from each group. You do a two leg semi. Um, the bottom seed hosts the first leg. If the top seed wins that first leg, it's over. Um, and now what that will do is that will force both teams to attack in the first leg, especially the visiting team, the higher seed. Um, Grant ha- wrote a column today saying he just wants a one-leg semifinal. Either way, um, what this is going to do is it will force the team to play five or six games to win MLS Cup, or possibly even seven if they're the wild card team. There will be heavy home field advantage for the higher seeds, for the teams that have better regular season records. It will involve more fans in the playoff structure. It will be e- plenty easy to schedule. Um, and I think at the end of that tournament, at the end of that five, six, or seven game tournament, no one will question the champion. And to me, that's the biggest issue. Now, with that system, how did you go about? What's your feeling on how the MLS Cup venue is decided? Would it be hosted by one of the winners or the highest seed, or does MLS not have the right markets and the right places in a winter MLS Cup final to be able to support that system? You know what, guys. It... Are there ever issues that lots of people talk about that you just find yourself going, meh, you know? <laughs> yes, all the time. Get over it. Every Get day. Over it. Every day that's on Twitter. One of them, that's just one of them for me. Like, like another one is like announcers. Like people go, <laughs> <laughs> you're talking no, about I'm our sure bread. And, you're picking stuff we don't talk yeah, about. Yeah, you're talking show. about our bread and butter, Brian. I, no, I, I, I get you. So the, 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 you know what I mean? And so MLS stuff, I, I like the neutral site. I mean, is it, look, and, and, I'm, and it's not for me, and I get that. I'm one of the very few. But as a journalist, mm-hmm. I like the neutral site. Because you know what? I, have my, I bought my plane ticket to L.A. weeks ago, and I've got my hotel set up already. Right. And I know where I'm going to be, and I, and, and, and I know that there will be events there uh, that, that MLS puts on and tr- that will help me do my job that they can only plan with the notice that a neutral site game affords. But you know what? I totally get the other side of the argument, and I have no problem with it. And it's just not one of those things that that I care too much about. I think a one-game final at this stage in the league's development is still a compelling showpiece. And I think whether it's it's a neutral site or whether it's hosted by a higher seed or hosted by the team that has better attendance during the year or whatever, um, I I still think that attention, that spotlight that the, 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 the league gets on the day of the MLS Cup final is worth doing. 
in terms of just real quick, in terms of the neutral site, uh, in, uh, neutral site final and, and, and putting on a showpiece thing, I think what bothers a lot of people, and these are the exceptionalist soccer fans, is that it smacks of the NFL and the Super Bowl, and that's what bothers them to a certain extent. I, I, I can see the pros and cons, and maybe I, I think I think if you want to make it a, a benefit to uh, the the better finishing team over the course of the regular season that they can host the final, that's valid, that's fair, but at the same time. Uh, you lose out on all that other stuff as you talked about. Yeah, and, and you know what? The Champions League does a neutral site final, and and the World Cup does a neutral site final. And I mean, there's there there there's plenty of soccer tradition for the neutral site final. Actually, I was just reading yesterday. Don't ask me why. Um, the Asian Champions League final, which is between a team from Korea and a team from Qatar, believe it or not, uh-huh. I think. Um, Only Brian Strauss. <laughs> no, come on. Go ahead, Brian. Decided before the tournament. To, to when the when the bracket was laid out, that one of the teams drawn at random will host the Asian Champions League final. So I think the Korean team is hosting the Champions League final simply because it came out of the hat right. in the right place. Right. Um, that seems kind of harsh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. there, there are different ways to do it. All, all, my my pet thing, I suppose. Other people can obsess over announcers and neutral site or host or whatever. My pet thing is creating a playoff system that produces a worthy and deserving champion that that is unquestioned uh, by people like us, by fans, by other players in the league. You know, all people that have, all people have been doing uh, for the past week is griping about the system. Even players are griping about it. I saw quotes from Landon Donovan today that Luis Bueno put up. Uh, Jason Christ griped to me about it when Salt Lake was here playing D.C. a couple weeks ago. So it, it, this is a distraction that needs to end. Um, and just like WPS realized today that until they got rid of Dan Boreslow, all people were going to write about was Dan Boreslow, MLS needs to figure out that all people are going to write about is how crappy the format is until they change it. Right. Well, let's talk about our crappy format that we currently uh, that we're currently in the midst of. Uh, at this point, we know that New York is going on to face LA. That's the marquee matchup. That I can't get away from the jokes that Don Garber is. Uh, you know, <laughs> singing hallelujahs because of this. I, I, I'm i sure it's true that in terms of marketing, this is the best the league could hope for. Uh, beyond that, I mean, I, I wanted to see it. I'm happy to see it. What do you make this of... This is an uh, MLS, it's an MLS executive's like, no, answer to Cialis. And, and look, this, this, mean, this, this, the structure affords us this matchup in this spot when it probably shouldn't happen here. L.A. shouldn't be made to, to travel cross-country for, for a, uh, a first leg in this series. Uh, but what do you make of L.A. and New York, and, and does New York suddenly have the juice to, uh, I don't know, come good on all that promise? Uh, they certainly delivered last night, but this, uh, you know, in spite of a pretty awful first 30 minutes. Um, you know, Baki pulled the right right strings. Frank Ross was very good. Um, you know, Lynn Pair obviously, is a known quantity. Every, everyone who knows the game realizes what he brings. Um, Henri, even though he, he, he's a bit of a diva and, is, and seems disinterested at, at times, is just so skillful that with one touch of a ball, he can turn things around. Um, and, he, and he gets four or five of those touches a game, even if he's not trying to. He's that good. Um, so, you know, deserving winners last night. One of the things I started to wonder about is, is whether or not um, – you know, I'm a Washington. I'm a hockey fan. I'm a Washington Capitals fan. And for the past 25 years, the Capitals have been the poster children for great regular seasons and playoff chokes. Mm-hmm. And what we've been talking about for a quarter century in the city is the difference between playoff hockey and regular season hockey. Um, I see that starting to develop in MLS. I, I see that there is now a playoff soccer, a style of playoff soccer, and 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 the qualities are are intuitive. There's grit. There, there, there's fighting for bounces, fighting for inches, um, physical, determined, defensive, cynical, of course, the word that Baca right. used. And the teams that have won MLS Cup, I feel like, have, have not necessarily had to play that kind of soccer, but can if called upon. I think L.A. can really play that kind of soccer. Their oh, defense yeah. is phenomenal. They can really lock things down. Um, they're, they're not going to make mistakes. So, to me... Despite the fact that they're the top seed, despite the fact that they won the supporter shield, this is not a high flying back and forth team um, that's sort of wowing people with offense, it's wowing people with an attack. They certainly have that talent, but really their strength is in back. And so to me, they're a bit different than maybe a couple of the top seeds we've seen in the past that have gone by the wayside. I think this team can play playoff soccer. 
So we're going to fill out the Brian Strauss bracket here. We've had a bracket competition on the show. We've got a, over 300 entries on it right now. But we wow. want the Brian Strauss bracket. We're going to make a, one of the preeminent journalists we're gonna put uh, you in on the soccer spot. right now. Fill out a bracket, basically. This gets your take. Right. So talking, talking up L.A. and New York, who's your pick from the L.A. New York series? Um, I'm going to go with the Galaxy for the reasons I just said ad nauseum. Okay. Um, <laughs> too good and bad, too hard to score on. You know, they'll get, they'll get the two or three goals they need. Uh, I'll, I'll go with L.A. All right. Uh, let me take us to RSL Seattle. This is the toughest one, in part because Seattle doesn't play playoff soccer. And it's shown they have mm-hmm. yet to win a playoff game. Um, they are they are my favorite team to watch in MLS. Maybe them in Kansas City. I really like the way they play, but I don't know that they play the type of soccer that wins in the playoffs. But here's what they have going for them: RSL's had a sink. Their best players haven't played together. Uh, I don't know when the last time Morales and Beckerman were on the field at the same time. They're not in form. And in City, I trust. I think he's going to figure out what they've done wrong in the past couple of years, and they're going to make it happen this time. So I'll go with the Sounders. Okay, so we got one thing to talk about. It's going to be decided in the next hour or so. By the time most of our listeners hear this, it's already going to be decided. So uh, Colorado, Columbus, it's the, uh, the the second place, third place beauty pageant show. Uh, <laughs> who's going to win between Colorado and Columbus to face uh, Sporting Kansas City? I just wrote COL on my little schedule. Oh, that so did, That's a I'm nice right. cover. Yeah, there you go. You got it both I'm ways. Right either, <laughs> I'm right either way. Um <laughs> It doesn't matter I know, either. I, I, I don't know I, if it matters I just, really I either. Columbus, Columbus is, seems kind of fine for the upset, I think. Uh, you know, Colorado's had some injuries. Um, you know, there have been some distractions in that camp in, in, in the last couple of weeks. Right. Um, you know, I think Chad Marshall is really underrated. He's an excellent defender. He, again, he's the type of guy that brings playoff soccer. Ekbo can play playoff soccer. Mendoza's been fine in the net a little bit. So let's go with uh, Columbus to win in snowy Colorado. All right, so that puts Columbus into a matchup with Sporting Kansas City and Houston-Philadelphia on the other side of that. Uh, let's start with Houston-Philadelphia. Like another tough one. Um, let's go with Philadelphia. Let's, let's, let's Peter Novak, wow. let's say that uh, he finds a way to uh, deny service to Brad Davis. Uh, he finds a way to limit Houston set-piece opportunities, uh, which is really where they're lethal. Um, Houston's lack of a consistent finisher up top is going to mm-hmm. bite them. Uh, so I'll go with the Union. I think it'll be a fun series to watch, despite the fact that all the other two in the West are getting most of the uh, the pub at this point. Uh, okay, Columbus, um, Columbus and Kansas City, since you had Columbus there. Yeah, um, I'll go with Kansas City. Uh, too fluid, too dynamic, too much speed. Um, on a great run, uh, good team at home. We'll go with uh, we'll go with Kansas City. All right, so you've got hey, Brian. Go ahead. Real, real quick, Brian. We were Jason and I were talking to us about this before we brought you on the air. Sporting Kansas City, real quickly, the most athletic team ever to play in MLS. Well, that's a really good question. Ever. Um, that, that is one of the most athletic teams I've ever seen in this league. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm just sort of going back through the. I think the only team that I can think of that matches them is maybe this year's Portland Timbers. That's another very athletic team as well. Jared's got two 2011 teams, the Timbers and and Sporting Kansas City, as the most athletic teams in MLS history. More as as the league goes on, more the Americans' better athletes will play this game. That's just a fact. I think you're seeing that. Well, that's possible. I can't think. I can't think of one that that comes to mind that is more so. So. Yeah, it's, it's, I, it's a really, really interesting question. I'll, I'll lay awake all night pondering it. Jared was just looking for validation. All right. <laughs> hey, maybe. Let's go back to the Western Conference. Uh, we have yeah. uh, L.A. and Seattle in the Brian Strauss bracket. This is probably the matchup a lot of people want to see for MLS Cup. Who takes that matchup? Again, got to go with the Galaxy. They, they absolutely shut down Seattle last year. That was a brilliant performance by the Galaxy. Uh, in those two games, I, I remember the amount of uh, defending uh, that Donovan and Beckham uh, did to really shut down Seattle on the flanks. Um, playing at home, the prospect of a cup at home, and the very, very, very vivid memories of that just pathetic performance against Dallas in the Western Conference Final last year. So uh, let's go with L.A. to make amends and to, uh, to dance to the MLS Cup Final on home soil. And you got Kansas City and Philadelphia on the other side there. I got to go with Philly only because every year some team we don't expect makes the cup. So, Union. 
That's pretty big. I was going to say you had... defense wins championships. Defense wins championships. Sure. Got a good D. I thought I was going to say you had a lot of chalk, but that one's a little surprising there. And uh, so you've got LA and Philadelphia in the final. I I got to imagine you're taking the Galaxy. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, ten times out of ten, <laughs> LA wins eight, right? But, right. You know, the the other two can always happen. But yeah, I'll I'll, I'll keep it safe and go with the Galaxy to uh, to win the title again. Defense wins championships. That theirs is absurd. Um, and their commitment to play full field defense is is very good. Um, there there are no prima donnas on that team, despite the famous names. They're all willing to do that dirty work, and I think that'll make the difference. Brian Strauss, SportingNews.com, a last minute uh, substitute for us, and a fantastic one. Thanks you, Brian. Thank Brian. We appreciate it. Yeah, don't burn those picks. They never happen. <laughs> they never happen. <laughs> it's the best soccer show, North American Soccer Network, NASN TV. We'll be right back. Thanks, guys. Back on the Best Soccer Show, Jason and Jared with you on a Thursday night live in our not usual spot. But we're doing our video show. And um, I think we're going to go ahead. I haven't cleared this with anybody. But we should go ahead and pimp our Sunday show, Jared. Because I think we're going to have a big one. Yeah, the Sunday show. Actually, you're going to get double uh, double your money this week. Even right. though your money's free right now. But right. Uh, we're going to do another video show on Sunday. And uh, I don't know that we have clearance yet either to say yeah, it. Let's uh, not... Producer, give us a holler. Oh, okay, well, there you go. We did get confirmation. Right. I'll let you Confirmation the from the producer right now that we will have Jay Demerit and the director of the Jay Demer- Demerit story on a video show on Sunday, hopefully to have at least uh, some trailer or clip of the Jada Merritt story that's coming out live in theaters next week. I believe November third and fourth are the premiere days. Yes, that is correct. I am. I am planning. I was planning on going to the show on the third here in uh, beautiful Fairfax, Virginia, but we'll have to see that how that goes. Jonathan is on the line, jumping in. How you doing, Jonathan? I'm good. How are you guys doing? We are fantastic. Uh, what's on your mind? MLS playoffs, that kind of thing. A few things. Is it all right if I touch on the international scene for a sec? Certainly. Do it. Of course. All right. First, I'd just like to bring in the form of Hercules Gomez. I would just be shocked if he doesn't get a call up for these November games. What? Don't you agree? I would imagine. I would imagine. I would have liked it. to have gotten Brian Strauss's take on that. We should have hit that. Well, you know what he's going to say? I don't think you're going to find. Here's the thing, Jonathan. I don't think you're going to find anybody who's paying any attention who's going to say that Hercules Gomez should not be in this team the next time around, and if he's not in that team, the next time after that, it's just it's getting to the point where it is absolutely ridiculous that he is not getting a call up. At, at a certain point, you could say it was just maybe personal preference with Klinsman, but at some point right now, the stats speak for themselves. If he doesn't call him in, I call him in for a camp, he is going to be. Uh, he's going to be called out on this. He he has to be. At this point, you can't not call in the second leading scorer. We're calling in, him out one, now. In, 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 in your region's probably best league. Well, we're calling I him out. We're calling him out now. And I think a lot of people are calling every day on Twitter. Uh, you, you know, the, I just saw something. I think uh, the original winger pumped something today. Thanks for the call, uh, Jonathan. We've got another one. Why don't we move to that? Area code 336. You're on the air. Who's this? Hey, this is Matt. Uh, hey, hey, Matt. Hey, uh, can I take it U.S. national team real quick? Sure. All right. Uh, I was just seeing if Bell saw the article come out the other day from ESPN where stats were provided to them by Opta. Did y'all see that? Uh, Opta stats for the national team, and what were those stats in regards yeah, to? for the first five games, and I just thought it would be a great talking point. They were talking on here about chances created, and that was right. what the article was about. Um, just to throw out a stepping stone off. Uh, Brick Shea created seven by himself, which I thought was very impressive. And then our back, Chandler and Dillo, they created four by themselves. And then they switched the point of focus to the midfield, where they named all the midfielders that played Bradley, Beckerman, Dempsey, Fidu, Jones, Torres. 180 minutes between the six of them, one chance created. And that's, that's 
kind of scary. Yeah, no, that is. You're, you're breaking up a little that bit. That's volumes it? right there. Look, uh, stats are an, are an interesting thing. Stats can say a lot of different things, and you can turn stats in various you directions. Can, but you, that speaks a lot right there. Okay, but let me ask you the question. What is What constitutes a chance? Do you know? I think. I don't uh, know. I, I think I mean, it, what I'm a saying ball is bouncing in the box or the player sure. nearby, a shooting opportunity. We can guess. Yeah, it, we can guess, and, I, and I'm, I'm guessing. Okay, but here's the thing. You don't expect maybe a lot of, of scoring chances created by some of the people he listed. Beckerman, you're not expecting a okay. lot. No. Bradley, outside of the first game no. he played where he played sure. an advanced role, you don't spend too much. No. The throw name Donovan being thrown in there, you start raising my eyebrows a little bit now because okay, Donovan played what three is that, of the five what games is it, now, right? What does it mean exactly? You said that, that there are seven chances uh, for Breck Shea. Okay, we know Breck Shea is coming on as a national team, or we, we expect him to be in the lineup going forward. And if he's if we don't see him there, there's some some problems. I mean, he has been creative. He has been uh, he's played too much, too many minutes, and he wore down towards the the end of that run. But you know, he'll be in this team next uh, next month when they go to Europe. I would expect no reason for him not to be now. So he, he's absolutely free and will be rested now. Absolutely, he should be sitting on his couch right now, resting up for that trip to Europe. You know but, that guy. He, that guy is sitting in an inflatable pool in this front yard. <laughs> <laughs> with the he's not, if it's a chair have it's you seen a lazy, the rooster i mean it's like a chaise lounge have you seen the rooster picture? on pavement have you seen the rooster picture which i don't know where that came from but there's the rooster a, picture there's a picture of like breck shea he he tweeted it he was he he like went he got back home from some road trip and he said it's good to be back in or maybe he was back at his parents house or something it's good to be back in wherever he's from and he's sitting on a couch and up on the back of the couch like right over his shoulder is a rooster just sitting there. Now, oh I don't know if God. it was a, a fake rooster. Please it looked pretty me damn real natural. to me. Please tell me that was natural. What? 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 Wait, what? Like, it wasn't staged. I just, I don't know. I That's believe what I'm it saying. wasn't even staged. Uh, it's Breck Shea. He's from Texas. He's he's pretty damn Texan. And I would... his hair probably his hair probably matched the rooster, too. <laughs> well, not that, Well, yeah, actually, at that point, it probably did pretty By well. By the way, did you hear? I came up with a name for his hairstyle in that game last I night. I saw the tweet. I don't remember what it was, which means it didn't strike the, me as, as that important. So it. <laughs> The shag hawk. I'm calling it a shag hawk. The shag hawk. Okay, we will we'll we'll go with that. Sure. Everybody pound uh, pound shag hawk on Twitter. That's uh, Jared's hashtag for Breck Shea's hairdo. Um, <laughs> back to the point at hand and the, and the stats and the, the the chances created. We know that there aren't a lot of chances being created, and um, you know I, as as unnerving as it is for the national team Actually, to go I'm out. I'm gonna go the other way, Jason. I'm gonna go the other way. I think there is chances being created. I just don't think they're capitalizing. How many times have you seen the U.S. Okay. national team in the last five games miss something on the doorstep? I think they uh, they create lots of chances in bunches there have been and a then couple they go of, long stretches look, with nothing. There have been a couple of games where that has been the case, where they had a chance and they couldn't convert it. But there have been other games where they controlled the ball. There was uh, tons of possession. They were passing it around fine, but they just couldn't find that extra pass or they couldn't get a guy through or they couldn't get the ball on anybody's head. It just it didn't come. Those things were not happening, whereas it, you know those were, there were no chances despite the fact they were controlling the game. So I don't I, I think you're right and wrong in a certain you know <laughs> at the same time you're right and wrong. And I think the chan the I lack of chances <laughs> the lack of chances when they do have the ball is a problem and, and I think you have to be patient. You're not gonna make a coaching change right now. You, we can put all the pressure we want on Jurgen Klinsman to go out and score some goals, but he's got his plan and as long as the games don't count for anything, what are you gonna say? I mean, there's a very good chance. We talked about this when they scheduled these games. There's a very good chance they go to Europe next month and lose both of those games, and he's got one in seven. What are we thinking then? Was that outside what you thought was an acceptable start? Because we both said he was going to give, he was going to be given, and should be given a very loose leash at the beginning and a very large. Well, it's easy long to say that. Stick. It's easy to say that when he's hired, right? It's easy to living, say it's that. Living is another thing, though. We're, that's right. We're living through it now. We have to deal with watching this team and seeing. But I'm them. surprisingly calm still. Five games. I in am with too. A one four I, I am too. But I don't know that that we are representative of the the fan base at large. I think people are freaking out a little bit and mostly because that's the natural state of u.s soccer fans is the freak out but there's also there's also a certain sense that these we know some of these guys are good players now whether or not uh bob bradley used them correctly is one thing but we know that they've they're good players and even the good players are struggling in this system or not getting done what we think they should get done and i think that's where it's worrying or he's playing guys that we can see with our eyes aren't good enough or shouldn't be in those positions we dealt uh, you know, we dealt with the Orozco Fiscal disaster and well, it's not a disaster, but you know what I'm saying? We had to deal with him being in the lineup. We had to deal with Castillo. We have to deal with, 
Um, Castillo, that's a disaster. I, I still, I still maintain that that Maurice. I've been getting a lot of flack for this, by the way, but I still maintain that Maurice Adu shouldn't be first choice. I mean, these there are some issues to go around. I don't, around think, I don't here. know that he should be first choice as an offensive center midfield well, that's, option. That, that's true. It depends on how on Klinsman goes out and plays. But if you've got Maurice Adu and Kyle Beckerman, what does that accomplish? What is your midfield giving you except for wow, these guys can really get stuck in? I'll tell you what, it gives you a straight line across the center. <laughs> Neither one of them's going forward. That's what I'm saying. And if they try, I mean, I, it hasn't been very successful. You could argue yet. that all of this has been. You know, all of this has been created by the fact that both Holden and Torres are, are injured at the same time, but you've got other options. I mean, there is still, as as unconvinced as we remain, you still have uh, Sasha Kleschen and you still have Benny Failhaber. I'm reading No Short Corners today, and I think it was actually a, a guest post by Matthew Doyle, who's the uh, the MLS analyst, or uh, you, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, he's MLS analyst. Ar- armchair MLS armchair analyst on MLSsoccer.com. And he was making the argument that Benny Failhaber has been really, really good for the Revs. Now, I'll admit I didn't watch the Revs that closely this year. I just didn't. They were a pretty poor team uh, in most ways. But if if he's watching every game and he's breaking them down and he thinks that Benny, Benny Failhaber deserves a shot, I'm not saying he's the savior in that position, but if he deserves a shot, who am I to argue with him? I'll say this about the Revs. I think they're a striker away from being competitive. We're not talking about the Revs. Re- we're not talking about you the Revs. You just were talking the Revs. You're talking, no, you're talking I, Failhaber. In terms of Failhaber and his performance, I'm talking about the Revs. He didn't have a very good team around so him, so it, it made him look— for me to get to the Revs somehow because you're talking Failhaber well, and being no. successful? No, 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 no. I just thought we were, were kind of on a roll Sorry, with the Nationals. It's not like we run a tight ship around here. we got to get to the— We talk <laughs> but, about the Revs a little bit. We but, talk about the Revs a little bit. We right. probably look, should this because was, Steve Nickel was fired this week. That's true. Or that's resigned. True. He says who you believe. We were talking MLS. And we were talking about the playoffs, but you you've got you've got uh, you've got a point there. There was a little bit of news that Steve Nichols has done in in New England. Ten years in that job, took them to two to uh, multiple MLS Cup finals, didn't win any. And you know, you wonder is that a what's his legacy there? I mean, the the team doesn't seem to care. The the ownership, excuse me, doesn't seem to care very much. Lots of people kind of grousing. I think his legacy is the same as was it Marv Levy's in in Buffalo? Isn't that who coached the uh, Buffalo Bills for all those Super Bowl, yeah, cha- Super Bowl yeah. championships that they lost? Yeah, I, it's Steve Nickel. I would hire him in a second if I'm an MLS. To do if what? I'm the, a, a director of an MLS team as a head coach. Okay. If, if I'm a director of a, of a team at TFC or any of those teams that need to turn things around to have a decent structure around them, I really feel that the structure has failed Steve Nickel. Now you can say four MLS uh, Cup appearances and not one uh, win. That's on Steve Nickel, and it. Is to a good extent, but you got to think he's working with the worst of the worst. That's like a coach of the Clippers somehow getting to the NBA Finals four times. Mm. The Clippers have the worst ownership maybe in all of pro sports, and I don't think the Crafts are too far behind when it comes to their soccer interests. They just they don't back anyone up with money. Right. They're not backing him up with support. They don't back him up in a number of different ways. I'd like to get a chance to see how good Steve Nickel is outside. Of okay. that shoebox, but th- there's not an obvious place for him to go that I can think of right now. Uh, there's just, I mean, you've got, uh, say, let's say the teams that didn't make the playoffs because really those are your those are your main uh, contenders. I think Chivas USA, Robin Fraser's given us. Uh, you've got to get, get, yeah, get a buy. You've got to give Robin Fraser some time in that job. DC United's got a a legend who needs some time in that job. Uh, and they came close. They have good pieces there. In D.C., sure. Um, yeah. Let's see. San Jose, you think they're going to fire? Maybe San Jose is the place, but I don't know. That's a whole lot different he's than New England. Of, uh, he's Frank Gallup's kind of entrenched. there in San Jose. Frank Gallup is entrenched in, in San Jose. But I'm saying, if you, if out of Vancouver the Vancouver just hired a coach. Just, they had an interim. They just, just hired, hired a coach. coach. Sure. Um, Chicago, maybe? I mean, Chicago's I always in flux. So I wouldn't I know be they're too doing surprised. Right. Maybe Chicago's type of a team that could. We don't know. Maybe uh, honestly, New York might need a coach soon. That's possible. I, do you think he's really a fit? Do you think Steve Nichols a fit for New York though? I mean, I, I kind of do. Think of how outspoken Steve Nichol is in general. <laughs> well, he'd be and great for be the like league to see in him New York. Freed up with a New York kind sure. of. Sure. He'd be great for the New league York in New York. I I just don't know that that he's the right mentality. I don't I know. Think maybe he's going to need their own see, translator the to figure out what he's saying. Maybe I'm letting the fact that he is that he was in New England for ten years in that environment affect how I view Steve Nichol as a personality. I mean, he's he's not the you know he he says what he means, but he's not the most. I don't know. How how would you? He's not like he's not. Uh, he's. 
I don't He's know. What am I saying? As hell. What am I saying here? I, I've lost it. No, he is entertaining. I have no but I'm idea what you're saying here, just like I'm listening to Steve Nichol right now. I have no idea. Yeah, what you're I mean, saying. what I'm saying. But, he's he's not a he's not a media darling by any any sense of the imagination. And, pro the producer said it best. He's not charming. Right. That's kind of what I was trying to say. I guess. But wouldn't you like to see Paul Mariner and him get the band back together? Bring them both to sure. New York. Sure. Put them in there. See what they can do. If anything, I think uh, uh, the guy on the sidelines is hot. I mean, like, I don't mean that like physically. I mean, he's like, <laughs> he, he gets animated. I love it when a mic picks up Steve yeah. Nickel on the sidelines. Yeah. He's just very well, New he's York. a quality coach. In the same vein, in the same vein that a foreigner like New, New uh, Luke Rogers is very New York like. I think that's uh, kind of what I'm saying here. And I wouldn't mind seeing Steve Nickel at another MLS team. I don't think another team should hesitate to bring him in. It's just a matter of if he feels he wants to go back overseas or not. Right. If he wants a change, change of scenery after 10 years in that job and, and not really getting all of the support that he probably wanted and needed and not completing the job, never winning an MLS Cup. I mean, it just, just hadn't worked out. And I think for the most part, MLS has passed New England by at this point. I mean, they're sitting on the side of the road and everybody else is going 95. I, I don't blame either New York or Steve Nichol for the change that's going on there. Both of them need New to change England. very badly. You, you meant New England. Uh, oh, what did I say? You said New York. Ah, it's okay. all right. It's all right. Let's, uh, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll let's do our brackets really quick as we uh, get out the door here. MLS Cup playoffs are happening. It's the best soccer show, North American Soccer Network, NASN.TV. Don't go anywhere. We're back, boys and girls. We have a voicemail. I think we should play this right off the top here, Jared. Do it. We we did ask people to uh, to give us their their voicemails at the uh, phone number, which I don't have right now. But we'll tell you at the other side of this. Okay, Jason and Jared, let's talk '80s music soundtracks and what is going to be on our playlist for MLS playoffs. I'm going with Joe Esposito. You're the best from the classic 1984 film Karate Kid. What are you guys listening to? What are we listening to? I do believe that's what he means. And like we don't have that just ready to go. You got to have a you got to have a favorite, favorite 80s like the the best Don't you got a favorite 80s uh, theme song or something like, like that from, from a movie? From a movie? Yeah, I mean well there's well, there's basic. so many good ones. I I still have this carded up from a couple weeks ago. You remember this? I played this for you. It's oh, the, this the, is Rocky. the Rocky movie. Yeah. I can't wait for that to go. We don't for have time me, for that. I go, I, go, I go down to two, but recently I always revert back to two 80s movies and the song that went along with them. Okay. One, Simple Minds, Don't Forget About Me from Breakfast Club. Just okay. eternal. Yeah, eternal. fantastic. You can't really beat that. I think that's the classic soundtrack and song. Number yeah. two, Cindy Lauper, Goonies Are Good Enough For Me. Okay. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. See, I, I would think movies first, then they have to go, well, what's the song for the movie? I think if you're going to talk, that's the wrong Rocky four song, to be honest with you. That's the one where he's in the Lamborghini driving after Apollo dies. You need the one where wait, wait, the wait. montage, the, the, the... Producer T is saying Fletch. What song is from Fletch? I don't even know. I can't name a song from Fletch. They're actually, I mean, don't be wrong. You brought movie, up, but I don't know a song you brought up, Fletch. You brought up Caddyshack. What's the song from Caddyshack? That would probably be my Kenny Loggins. One. That you was, don't even think I know it, did you? You no, didn't think no, I knew it. It's no, no, Kenny Loggins. I couldn't, I couldn't pull it. I couldn't pull it. But yeah, you're right. Any Kenny Loggins from the 80s in a movie, actually. Top, <laughs> he top just Gun, top Footloose, yeah, Caddyshack. Yeah, yeah. The guy was gold. I'm telling he you. Was and he had hair like Stephen Keel. Cranking them out. All right, let's let's uh, let's quickly do our bracket. So we're on the, uh, on the record here with our choices for MLS Cup playoffs. Again, we know who won last night. We know that uh, that New York beat Dallas. We've got that. Even though for the I think record, that was both of us, way. both of us said that we picked New York. It's just it, there's no way to prove. It. So you have to. to, to you can go back that. in my Twitter timeline and sure. see where I said it. All right. So we've got New York beating Dallas. We already know that. Uh, other the other one is tonight. We are going to look like idiots if we get this wrong right before the the game happens. But here you go. This is the most coin toss at it. I'm picking. Them, yeah, but I'm picking really? Columbus. I'm picking Columbus. You think Columbus? Yeah. I'm going to go with the home team. No, I'm going Columbus as well. Right. I'm going Columbus. Both of us pick Columbus. Let's go back out to the West. Uh, RSL in Seattle. Quick. 
Uh, I'm going to take uh, Seattle in that game. I want to take RSL. I love RSL, but I'm taking Seattle. Um, and the other one, the other semi over there is New York, LA. Your your big one. You've got uh, you got your boys going through. I'm actually taking New York in that. See, I'm taking LA. So I am going I, I think to. Uh, that's probably the smarter pick. For some reason, such I'm just a in New York. You're such a traitor. I know. I'm a traitor right now. I'm a uh, total traitor. All right. Just put a leather jacket on me and call me a New Yorker, for God's sake. <laughs> Houston, Philadelphia in the East. Uh, I'm going to take uh, Philly in that. Philadelphia in that. I'm taking Philly as well. Columbus and Kansas City, since we have Columbus Kansas going City, through. Kansas City, maybe the easiest pick okay. out of everything. See, here's, the, here's our saving grace, that we both pick Columbus. Columbus could lose tonight, but we're both picking KC, so we'd be wrong either oh, we're, way. We're dusted. <laughs> yeah. We're dusted if that doesn't go right. our way. So we're both picking Kansas City to win in that matchup. LA and Seattle out west in your conference final. Uh, actually, I have. Uh, Seattle I mean, sorry, you have. Sorry, line. you have Seattle. And uh, I, I'm going to take New York in that one as well. All right, you've got New York beating Seattle in the con- in the Western Conference. You've got New York as the Western Conference champions. Just want to point that out. That's how the playoff system uh, works. Is that a new thing in MLS? No, no, no I it's don't not. Know that. That's not a it's novel not. They, idea. They've been it? Western Conference champions before, and I've got LA beating Seattle. Uh, and then uh, we both have Kansas City beating uh, Kansas City and Philadelphia in the East. Who's I your take choice Kansas City there? That. I'm taking Kansas City as well. So you've got New York, Kansas City. L.A. and Kansas City are my finalists. I've got L.A. 2 nothing over Kansas City in the MLS Cup final at the HDC. So a home or a home MLS Cup final win for L.A. That'd be nice. I want to say that that's what's going to happen. I mean, nothing would make me happier, really. But the other side of me, uh, my bracket's not working out that way. I'm going to say it's going to be uh, Sporting KC over New York in the final. I think uh, the most athletic team in MLS gets the championship. The most athletic team in the history of MLS. Make sure Possibly. you say it correctly. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for us live on a Thursday. Uh, best soccer show on North American Soccer Network. Please go to iTunes, rate and review. That helps us immensely. You guys have done fantastic so far, but got to keep it up. Uh, we're available on outlet after outlet after outlet. Roku and Apple TV and Jared, I think you have a list. or You know it better than I do. That's what it is. That, that, that's most of it right there. iTunes, Apple TV, Roku. Those are the ones you can get us on. Roku, if you're going to watch us there, add Blip TV. That's where you, how you can uh, access us. More than anything, rate and review. You guys have been absolutely wonderful with your reviews. If you want, get creative with them. Throw in your favorite 80s uh, movie uh, song or anything yeah, like right. that. Get creative with it, but more than anything, just be honest and take part in the show. Yes. Continue to support us. We appreciate it. Give us your MLS playoffs 80s movie anthem, I guess. Big show on Sunday. Yes, absolutely. Um, come back and uh, make sure you, you uh, pay attention to see when we're on the air Sunday when we're talking Jada Merritt's story. All right, everybody. That's going to do it for us. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye.